Hello, designers. It's been a little while since I've been in here loading up the channel with tutorial videos, uh, but it feels good to be back, and this one was a little while coming. Uh, I believe it's actually a little overdue. So welcome to Setting Justified Type. We'll be using InDesign today. What I have up here on the screen, uh, I did a loose list roughly in order uh, of my process when I'm setting justified type. Setting justified type is take some finesse. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth and a few things you kind of wiggle with and pair up. Um, there are some good, really good guidelines and good starting points uh, that I want to walk you through today. Uh, this isn't necessarily a hundred percent uh, linear. However, um, this is really the process I go through. All right, so let's jump right in to InDesign. Uh, I have a standard letter size page spread here. Uh, these two blocks of text are what we are going to be working with. Let me go ahead and get this in here. Um, right now, these, this text, we're going to work here with the wider box on the left to start, um, are not formatted at all. They are default, default, all the way around. So 12, auto, minion, pro, blah, blah, um, fairly ugly. Um, this first one, I wanted to do um, a wider width, about as wide as a page will handle. Uh, letter size page. Uh, I am focusing on print. I'll point out a couple differences along the way between print and screen. Um, but really, this kind of typesetting really is directed towards print as far as application. Um, so back to uh, text box width. Um, Technically not line length quite yet. Uh, I have this set six and a half inches wide, as you can see up here in the toolbar. And the reason for that is letter size page, one inch margins outside, inside. Um, that's as wide of a text box as you pretty much ever are going to have. Um, we can check that. So 12 point type, this is a serif typeface. Uh, when you're looking at line length, uh, unless you're absolutely locked in to your grid, and that absolutely has to determine your width. Um, even at that point, you still wanna check line length a couple times. Um, you really wanna go by character count. So up here, uh, I have the info panel open. I click twice into that line and it's showing me character count um, for my line length. I'm at 93. That includes spaces, of course. Um, 93, not bad. So traditionally uh, with a serif typeface, 40 to 80 characters is what's generally considered to be a good line length. And that's all based on readability and how easy it is for the um, audience to read. A little longer and or too long in general, you tend to lose your place because the line is too long. Uh, and you find yourself continually going back, losing your place and starting lines over too short. And you've got kind of the tennis match thing going on where it's back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Uh, and it's just, it's uncomfortable as far as reading. Um, so always consideration of the end user. Um, and especially with type, it's, type can't do its job if it isn't legible. So line length, always really important. Um, starting there, I am, my first move uh, is going to be typeface. Uh, I'm going to go with a traditional sans serif that I know sets fairly well um, and has decent metrics to it. In case you are unaware, metrics are the spacing uh, kerning pairs technically 
um, that were set up by the person that designed the typeface. And this is giving me the slightest bit of lag here. All right, Scala Sands. I want to be in this Scala Sands for regular. There we go. Um, 10 to 12 is considered uh, body's, body copy size. I tend to set, actually I'm notorious for setting very small type. Um, I tend to set a little smaller. I generally feel on a printed page, 12 more often than not is a little too big. So I'm gonna start at 11, 13 for my line spacing letting. Um, two points usually does it at body copy size. You can go a little tighter, a little more open, depending on uh, what you're doing inside of there. By default, nowadays, the metrics, uh, the kerning is set on metrics. Uh, some of the newer, especially digital design for screen fonts, actually set better uh, on optical kerning since we're going to be adjusting the J portion of the H's and J's, hyphenation and justification. Um, that's how you get your justified type really dialed in. Um, that's where the true fine tuning happens down there in the H's and J's. Um, since we're going to be doing a lot of work in the J's, I want to eliminate everything I can that InDesign is trying to do for me. Um, the algorithms are good, but they aren't quite that good just yet. Um, they're getting close though. All right, so now I have a reasonable typeface at a reasonable weight at a reasonable point size with a reasonable line length. So now I'm gonna check my character count again. I'm up at 104 for a long line here. And even, yeah, and you can see I've got a hyphen. I want to naturally try to get my width here to something that looks fairly comfortable the way it's set already without me starting to do a lot of finagling and forcing, okay? So I'm also gonna flip off my hyphenation kind of right away. Um, now I'm down to six wide. That's really comfortable for a long line. Um, let's check one of the longer lines here. I'm sitting at 95. Um, that's, that's still pretty big for me. So I'm gonna come a little farther in. And the last thing I'm gonna do so I'm going to cheat down my point size the least bit and maybe check. I thought earlier when I was working on this, I got it fairly flat right around here. Um, I'm going to check that character count again, 94. I'm still a tad high. Um, so now as I'm kind of looking, and right now what I want to do is kind of just finagle a little um, to where it naturally sits as close to ragged flat as possible. Um, and I have the size all, all wonky here. So I'm gonna go down to 10 and a half. And what I'm looking at is the real issue Kind of was that last and and that big curriculum that was sitting up there. All right, so now I'm down at five and a half. If I was up, I bet if I was still at 11, because I know all of you out there are big fans of larger type rather than smaller. Um, and let's say it's about right there is really close. Um, I'm gonna be able to skip ragging that um, because it's pretty close to flat. Uh, there's one hole right here. The next word on the next line is were, and that's only four characters. With the justification settings, I'm probably gonna be able to get that up, all right? So we're kinda here 
in the process. I've already rechecked through my line length and readjusted just to look at the different options. Again, what I'm trying to do is get this to set based on point size and line length to naturally set fairly flat for the rag on the right hand side. At this point, from where I am now, I'm going to go ahead and set my paragraph style. So I'll bring this over here so everybody can watch what I'm doing. Make sure when you're doing this, you have preview checked. Uh, let's just call this justify, justify long. Um, generally, the rules are when it comes to setting justified text that the settings that you dial in are only going to work for that specific typeface, point size, and line length. Um, occasionally, if all you're changing is line length, um, it'll still work or get you really, really close. Um, but that's why I put a name on this short and long. Um, generally, when you're working on documents, especially as far as body copy goes, um, it's really best consistency wise. It really helps your layouts. Uh, if you can land on one line length for body copy and stick with that all the way through the piece that you are working on, whatever that case might be. Um, certain smaller format things. Um, I just wanna make sure I have a space after for my paragraphs here. God, that looks huge. Um, it's because I'm zoomed in and on a different monitor than what I'm normally working on. Um, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, certain kind of things you're working on, brochures, um, smaller flyers, those sorts of things. Um, naturally, you're only going to have the option to work with one uh, line length. Uh, when you're into longer form documents, books, um, pieces of that nature, maybe you have two body copy settings that are two different widths. Um, I would suggest you really don't need that. Um, and then it makes for much more cohesive layouts. If you can land on one width for all of your body stuff. All right, H's and J's. Hyphenate, yes. I just turned hyphenate back on. More often than not, you need a few hyphens to make your justification smooth. Um, what we are going for as far as getting this set correctly or getting it set well is smooth texture, even spacing, no rivers, no giant holes. It shouldn't be really open line, really tight line. Um, and back and forth that we're looking for smooth texture. The technical typographic term is color. Um, I like to use texture because I feel it kind of shuts down any confusion uh, as to what I'm actually talking about. It's not the color of the type as um, from the color palette. It's texture that we're talking about. Uh, a really good way to check that is to kind of lean back in your chair, squint your eyes. Um, and when you do that, it takes your ability to, it kind of blurs everything, right? It takes your ability to read it away and all you get is texture. Really well, type that is really well set will have a smooth texture with smooth rhythm really nice flow, no holes, no tight spots. Um, so that's the intent of where we're going here. More often than not, um, you need a few hyphens. These settings that I'm using, at least you don't want to hyphenate short words. You want to try to avoid hyphenating proper nouns, so names of people, places, and things. Um, short words just don't work. The absolute rule of thumb is you have to have three characters. I like to go with words at least seven letters and 
after first four and then three. Certainly in a paragraph, if you're in that three to five complete sentences sort of rule, three hyphens is plenty, plenty. Uh, and the area within which um, you can have those type ins a half inch is good. I believe that's actually the default. Um, I could turn off all of these. Absolutely, if you're setting column text, you want to turn off across column. Capitalized words would get you away from proper nouns. And absolutely, you're never going to hyphenate the last word in a paragraph because not only is that going to give you a widow, it's going to give you a half of a very ugly widow. All right, into the J's. And this is where the magic happens. First thing, and take a look over here, watch the text when I swap this. Start at the bottom first on composer. Adobe Paragraph Composer is the default. Um, what that means is InDesign is trying to adjust the entire paragraph, all the lines between paragraph breaks um, to be a smoother rag. And I forgot to put this on justified here indents and spacing. Uh, it was because I was concentrating so hard on the information I'm giving all of you. Uh, we want left justify. Um, the left, center, right, and full is how the last line of the paragraph is treated. Um, I would say 97% of the time, unless you're working on uh, a greeting card, an invitation, or possibly a recipe, or you might want center justify, uh, left justified generally is what you're looking for. And that little change based on how I dialed this in at the beginning, um, this already looks pretty good over there. Um, I can tell already from my personal taste, uh, it's a little open, um, but we're going to fix that. So back to Composer. Uh, paragraph Composer works on the whole paragraph. We want single line so that um, it's addressing by line and that if we need to rag or put a manual break in there ourselves, it's only that line that's being affected. The World Ready composers, both of them, those are made for right to left RTL languages. So right to left reading languages. Doesn't work with um, English, obviously, uh, and the other left to right reading languages. So single line composer is what you want. Um, I do not adjust the justification auto letting or the glyph scaling where the magic really, really happens is in here in the word spacing. Uh, the default is really super open, way too open. I like to start at 9110 for min max and then not a big difference, um, tightened in slightly. And then for letter spacing, um, you can go to the twos, so minus two, zero, two. I like to start at the ones. Um, part of the thing I'm trying to do is keep this as natural as possible and not really force it into where I want it to go. All right, that's looking pretty good and pretty smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. I'm gonna click off, we're gonna take a look. Uh, I'm going to lean back a little, I think, and we can zoom out too. That helps to look at texture. This is a little open for me, honestly. Um, that could be a point size. That could be a line length. Um, if I take that just down one click for width on the text box, I would say 
for me uh, right there is pretty good. Absolutely, what I'm seeing though, let me turn back on the info panel. Let's check a uh, character count here for a line. And 85, fantastic. Uh, you want to be no less than 40, um, no more than 80. I think nowadays with sans serif uh, typefaces, you can get away with 90. Generally, 66 is considered the perfect line. Um, this really actually looks pretty good to me. Let me come back in here. We have one last chore here at the bottom of my list. Hang punctuation. And we have a comma right here and this hyphen, another comma. We need to hang those outside of the right hand edge. Um, and Roman hanging punctuation is what it's called when you're looking for it in Illustrator. And it's hiding in the paragraph panel menu. In InDesign, you need to find type in tables story will open that up. I have mine docked over here with my pre-flight and normally it'll be unchecked. You have to Turn it on by text box. Yes, I know, a little painful, but totally worth it. Uh, when you open it up, the default, it'll be sitting at 12. You wanna go by your point size is where you want to start. Since I'm at 11 point text, I'm gonna put that on 11 and take a look. And what you can see is now my comma here, my hyphen here, and my other comma are sitting right on the edge of that text box and looks pretty good. It could be a smidge farther, uh, but let's go with, I wanna get it close. And yeah, I'm okay with that. That looks pretty good. Um, again, it's a little tough for me because I don't set the type this big. However, I'm showing you a process Okay, um, wow, we are pretty far in uh, video length wise. However, I'm grandfathered in beyond the 15 minute video. I'd also like to tackle a short line. I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly. Um, the process is the same and we kinda already talked sort of all the way through it. Um, obviously, you know, I could check my paragraph style and if I had the whole box selected could check my paragraph style and see if that worked and see what that looks like um, I'm seeing lots of holes and loose followed by tight this section pretty much that whole first paragraph is super tight paragraph two is super open Here's a big widow, um, and paragraph three is a, just a really, really big mix. Um, so let's put that back to well. Let's just adjust from yeah. Let's put that back to basic paragraph and get a new style in here and. Need to move this first. Apologies. There's that rusty, a little bit rusty that I was talking about. All right, let's pull this up here. This is going to be justify short or shorty. And let's find that correct Scala sans regular. With this one, the way I'm gonna dial in the line length just to save us a little time um, and make a point about not necessarily using round numbers uh, because keep in mind, really traditionally the way you typeset, you wouldn't be working with English measurements. Um, you'd be working in points and picas only. So for line length out there, um, which I left way too long, by the way. Um, so I have my 
point size and line spacing set. What I want to do now is check my line length by character count. So highlight info panel, 60. I can be, I'm shooting for 4550, right? I'm thinking that this eventually is gonna end up two column text uh, around side this gutter here and justified. I have a lot of room to work with and to get down in that neighborhood, especially since I started um, with a really big point size. And again, what I'm looking for is trying to get this as naturally flat so that I don't have to rag it right off the bat and also kind of no widows in through here. Um, I believe I went all the way down there and was six five. I don't want to fight this too much, just out of time. So ten five twelve six. Let's take a look at that. That is pretty good. Um, I do still have hyphenation on. So that's kind of where it starts to look ugly. So now I'm just scrolling through a little line width and I actually think I want to stay down here. And let's stick with that 10.5 because it's a really good line length, 52. Um, that puts these little shorter lines right down in that 45-ish range. I don't have any bad widows right now, the way this is sitting. Um, generally, I don't work in preview mode either. Uh, however, in terms of demo and you all being able to see what I'm doing, it can be kind of helpful. So let's dial this in, shall we? Um, Scala 10, and let's start from here. So that means, let me do this really quick. Get rid of the old one, select this again, go back to, that was a bad move. All right, um, shorty. So let's just get in here, I pretty much remember what I had set, 10, 6, indents, left justify. I need some paragraph space happening. Then down to hyphenation. We are going to allow hyphenate. We're going to go 7, 4, 3. It's my standard. Um, that works. You certainly don't want any more hyphenation than that. All right, so there's our H's. Now for the J's, first move, single line composer. And then we're gonna take our min to 90, our max to 110. We're gonna start with the ones for letter spacing, and then take a peek. And what I'm seeing is open, open, really open. So I can up this. Let's go take the min lower, lower to allow it to be a little tighter um, and take the maximum down 105 for the same reason. Um, generally with shorter line lengths, you're going to need to let it be a little tighter than what you would at longer line lengths. And boom, there it was. You can see it already. So there, last move, do not forget to hang your punctuation. Uh, optical margin alignment, it was already on because I was playing with this earlier. Um, we don't have a ton of punctuation out there. 
except for this quote. Um, if you have boxes that don't have any punctuation on the right hand edge, obviously, you don't need to hang it. Um, it is just a really good habit to be in. So let's zoom out, take a look at the handiwork. Um, I honestly, if it were me, here's a river right here and now I have a widow. Um, I would probably continue making sure I got this dialed in. Uh, certainly I want that widow to go away. That's pretty close. Um, there's a big river right there though. So again, takes a little work. Um, definitely we nailed the long line. Shorter lines of text are take a little more finesse and a little more work. So um, I, this went a little long. Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, I guarantee it was worth the time. Definitely you've seen both use cases now, some general guidelines that work for sure. You understand the Adobe Paragraph and Single Line Composer now, all helpful things. Remember, really good typography and really good typesetting takes a lot of practice. Don't forget to lean back, zoom out, and check your texture. Uh, we're looking for smooth and reads well always. Um, happy typesetting.